The 28th edition of the Heads of State and Government, which will kick off in Santo Domingo, capital of the Dominican Republic. 457 people were arrested during mass protests across France against the pension reform. In Ethiopia, a rebel has been appointed to head the interim government of Tigray as a major step to implement the peace deal signed between the government and the army group. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada, and these are our news. Everything is ready for the 28th edition of the Heads of State and Government, which will begin in a few hours in Santo Domingo, capital of the Dominican Republic. Convened under the slogan, Together for a Fair and Sustainable Liberal America, the leaders of the 22 countries will meet on Friday and Saturday in the Dominican Republic. 14 presidents, two vice presidents, two prime ministers and 22 foreign ministers are expected to attend in a meeting that could represent an opportunity for the integration of Latin America and European countries. The difficult geopolitical situation caused by the armed conflict in Ukraine and its range of repercussions will also be on the agenda, together with the critical situation in Haiti. The European Union's high representative for foreign policy, Joseph Borrell, will be present at the summit. And the Bolivian president, Luis Arce Catacora, proposed a new chapter of bilateral relations to the government of Chile in order to address historical issues, including his country's right to a sea access. On the occasion of the Day of the Sea, the Bolivian president reiterated that he will maintain his claim for sovereign access to the sea and will insist on the dialogue with China or Chile to solve what he considers is still a regional scar. Arce called on the Bolivians to learn from the lessons of the past by referring that no natural resource is safe from capitalist greed and foreign interests. By virtue of the 1904 treaty, Bolivia ceased to be a coastal country and lost great mineral wealth, including the Atacama Desert, which is currently used for the production of hydrogen-based energy that supported the development and privatization of Chile. Chile has unilaterally privatized most of its ports, delegating the fulfillment of its commitments to private companies that profit from the Bolivian sea isolation. Bolivia rejects the concessions made to private companies in the ports, granting them the possibility of imposing tariffs, procedures and conditions that hinder, delay and increase the cost of the transit of our goods. We call on Chile to comply with these commitments to free transit and allow Bolivia to operate our own freight under conditions that prioritize the easing of trade rather than the profit of a few companies. The Bolivian president also said that the countries with lithium are willing to design a strategy in favor of their people. We have lithium in Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, and Peru. We are willing to jointly design a policy that ensures the position of our countries as suppliers of this type of energy under sovereign conditions in favor of our people. We don't want our lithium to be in the eyes of any southern command, nor to be a motive for the stabilization of democratically elected governments or for external harassment. And now we move on to other topics. The heavy rains of the current winter season in Ecuador have left 21 people dead and more than 23,000 affected, according to the Minister of Economic and Social Inclusion, Esteban Bernal, on Thursday. The coastal city of Guayaquil downed flooded after receiving 162 millimeters of rainfall in less than 24 hours, which is considered a torrential rain, according to the National Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology. Similarly, in other parts of the country, the constant rains of this season have also caused floods, landslides, damage and road closures. For its part, the Oceanographic Institute of the Navy warned that rainfall will continue and water will enter the sewage system at least until Friday.
At least 69 people died in Peru due to the rains that hit several regions in the country. The National Institute of Civil Defense said that more than 80,000 people have been affected by the rains, while 1,666 homes have been destroyed, 2,510 uninhabitable and more than 31,000 partially damaged. The entity also stated that search and rescue efforts continue as five people are still reported missing. Authorities declared a disaster alert in several areas due to the damage caused by the rains. Peru is facing disasters in several areas of the country, although more severely in the northern coast as a result of torrential rains that cause floods and landslides over populated areas. Now, this has happened to me and the rest of the neighbors are also in the same limbo. What is going to happen? It could happen now or later, but everyone is in danger, and that is why I would like them to give us a piece of land. I really feel very sad, saddened by everything that is happening. Neighbors have passed away, sadly, and I'm worried about the situation for us now. What are we going to do? We can stay at home either. Now we go to other stories. Hundreds of people gathered on Thursday night in the Peruvian city of Cusco to receive the remains of the young man Rosalino Flores, who died as a result of a load of 36 pallets fired by a policeman during the repression of a protest last January. Family, friends and demonstrators gathered outside the Teniente Alejandro Velasco Astete International Airport in Cusco to begin a mobilization with the remains of the late young Peruvian and then toured several parts of the Peruvian city with the remains of Flores to demand justice. Last January 11th, the young Rosalino Flores, together with his brother Juan Jose, took part in the protest in Cusco against the government of the appointed President Dina Boluarte in the city of Cusco. During the repression of the mobilization, Flores was shot in the back by a police officer from a few meters away. Due to his wounds, Rosalino lost 80% of his digestive system and died in agony after two months. Let's take a short break. But first, remember you can follow us on our TikTok account at Telesur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and more. Other studies coming up, stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. A total of 457 people were arrested on Thursday during mass protests across France against the pension reform. The figure was confirmed on Friday by the Minister of the Interior, Gerald Dermonin, who insisted on pointing to the leftist sectors as investigators or as instigators of the widespread discontent. The expressions of the government official come a day after millions of French people mobilized in more than 300 points of the country against the pension reform that delays the minimum retirement age Age from 62 to 64. In addition, the Department of the Interior counted 903 fires of street furniture and containers which some districts of Paris, as in other cities, have been accumulating due to the garbage collection uh, strike for more than two weeks. Yes, of course, we have to continue so there are new people, there are new faces, our comrades are tired, but they are still there, still as determined, certainly more so since the 49.3, which made everyone angry and yesterday added another layer. I think that the only way to get out of this movement is from the top. The responsibility is in the government's camp. It must take a step in the direction of the social movement. We have a completely illegitimate government, which is almost defeated, which is already on its knees. So the energy is there. We know we're going to win. The government no longer has any strength, so we know we're going to win. There is no need to look for energy. We have it. In this context, one of the cities affected by police violence was Toulouse, in the midst of the demonstrations against the pension reform. A man in his 40s was seriously injured and thousands of demonstrators were arrested during the clashes with the security forces.
Likewise, clashes broke out between protesters and security forces officials in the western French city of Nantes, where, according to the trade unions, some 80,000 people took to the streets on the ninth day of nationwide protests against the French government, a sponsor Persian reform. Meanwhile, in Strasbourg, at least 12,400 citizens joined countrywide mobilizations. In this respect, citizens rejected the pension reform, stating that it goes against the interests of the working class. The city of Strasbourg has now had nine consecutive days of mobilizations against the pension reform. And the Italian Coast Guard showed their vote on Thursday, rescued another boat carrying what they say are 295 asylum seekers in distress, 90 miles off the Calabrian coast. Authorities of the Interior Ministry estimate that more than 20,000 asylum seekers have landed on Italy's shores so far this year, compared to around 6,000 in the same time in 2022 and 2021. On Tuesday, Italian Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni again demanded the European Union to intervene to prevent her country's costs from becoming what she called migrant cemetery or Europe's refugee camp. The Meloni administration has demanded the European community to increase cooperation with African nations and elevate the control of the central Mediterranean route. And the TikTok chief executive, Xu Zizhu, was grilled on Thursday morning by the U.S. lawmakers from both sides of the aisle. TikTok, owned by the Chinese company ByteDance, has long faced criticism over the data it holds on the U.S. users. Data lawmakers fear it could fall into the hands of the Chinese government given the close contact of parent company top executives with China's Communist Party. The platform has repeatedly denied those claims, saying they store U.S. user data outside of China. Lawmakers also hammered Xu over the platform's impact on mental health, mainly of its young users. In 2020, the Trump administration targeted the platform with an executive order prohibiting U.S. companies from doing business with ByteDance. Biden revoked that order in June 2021 under a stipulation that the U.S. Committee on Foreign Investment conducted a review of the company. When that review stalled, Biden announced that TikTok must sell its Chinese-owned shares or face a ban in the U.S. Now, would also like to talk about national security concerns that you have raised, that we take very, very seriously. Let me start by addressing a few misconceptions about ByteDance, of which we are a subsidiary. ByteDance is not owned or controlled by the Chinese government. It's a private company. We believe what's needed are clear, transparent rules that apply broadly to all tech companies. Ownership is not at the core of addressing these concerns. Tell us where English continues to grow. You can now tune in from 33 different African countries through Starsat. Dial 461 and enjoy our late in American alternative broadcast. One final short break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. In Ethiopia, the leader of the Tigray People's Liberation Front has been appointed to head the interim government of Tigray. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Zafis announced on Twitter the appointment of Gitashi Rida as the chairman of the interim administration of the Tigray. The appointment comes as a major step to implement the peace deal signed between the government and the rebels, which also include the removal of the rebel organization from the nation's terrorist list. Gitashi Rida was previously Minister of Information in the Ethiopian federal government of Prime Minister Haile Mariam Dizalin between 12, 2012 and 2018. The Tigray interim government is to be led by the People's Liberation Front until elections can be held. We 
have a new beginning and we have to build on that new beginning. So I hope uh, our effort to silence the guns would be followed through in earnest and our people deserve all the peace in the world and we need to rebuild communities which have already been shattered as a result of such a bloody war that has continued for the last two years and it still continues. The World Health Organization, WHO, said on Thursday that the death toll from the Marburg virus epidemic in Equatorial Guinea has risen to 20, with Malabo reporting six more fatalities in 10 days. The cases of this fever, which is almost as deadly as Ebola, have spread from the province of Kien Tem, where it caused the first known deaths on 7th of January. Tubara, the economic capital of this small Central African country, which is partly an island and partly a continent. This expansion suggests wider transmission of the virus and requires intensified response efforts to avoid a large-scale epidemic and the loss of life. Between 11th and 20th March, eight cases were confirmed. Six of them died, the Equatorial Guinean government said on its website, without establishing a total toll since the beginning of the epidemic. The last official death toll was 11 on 28th February. On Tuesday, Tanzania confirmed its first known case of Marburg virus disease. So far, eight cases have been confirmed, including five deaths. More than 160 contacts have been identified and are being monitored. National responders trained jointly by WHO and the US CDC have been deployed to the affected region to carry out further investigations monitor contacts, and provide clinical care. Marburg belongs to the same family of viruses as Ebola, causes similar symptoms, transmits between humans the same way, and like Ebola, has a very high fatality ratio. Almost 300 Ivorians were repatriated on Thursday from Tunisia, where migrants claim they no longer feel safe after President Kai Zayed has said they represented a demographic threat. The Tunisian National Guard said that since Wednesday they had stopped a total of 2,034 asylum seekers trying to reach Europe. A rights group said five migrants drowned and another 28 were missing on Wednesday after their boat capsized off Tunisia. The country's president, Kai Zayed, accused immigrants from sub-Saharan Africa of causing a wave of violence and crime and of posing a threat to the country's demographic composition. Tunisia, a North African country of 12 million people, hosts an estimated 21,000 migrants from other parts of Africa, representing a 0.2% of the population. Parts of Tunisia's coastline are within 150 kilometers of the Italian island of Lampedusa. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa welcomes Belgium's Ken Philippe and Queen Mathilda in the capital Pretoria. Ramaphosa emphasized the role played by Belgium in backing the World Health Organization's mRNA Technology Transfer Hub initiative, established in South Africa to improve Africa's access to vaccines and therapeutics. The African leader also praised Belgium's donation of about 10 million doses of vaccines during the pandemic, with a significant proportion going to African countries. The Belgian monarchs are expected to engage with South Africa's business, academic and civil society in Johannesburg and Cape Town over the next few days and visit historical and cultural sites. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesworthyenglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesworth English, I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.